Maddie Fresh on the track up his state. And I'm bringing to you live my boys Alec and Nate, Tequila Ty, Jay Nelly, and Dylan in the building. So kick it back, pour the drink. We chillin' because I'm boozing and betting and ballin' like I'm two six in the blue kicks. Watch me move quick. Yeah, it's the blueprint. So who's getting involved? Welcome in to the show. This is booze, bets, and ball, baby. Welcome in to the podcast <laughs> with now the best intro out there. Do you like it, Nate? Oh my god, yeah, like. You know, back in the old ones when we had that stupid countdown and the, yeah, stock, that's the stock music, uh, the 30 seconds felt like it took forever. I could listen to Maddie Fresh all day long. Yeah, that, that did feel quicker than the, <laughs> the normal 30-second countdown. That, that yeah. was, that's good. Uh do appreciate him doing that for us. That was fun. Definitely appreciate that. So we are back this week. Uh, last week we were kind of off. We meant to have... Penn State commit Alec Birchmeyer on. He had some things come up last minute, busy with his own football camp, uh, high school senior. So you get that. It's understandable. You know, we're we're batting a thousand with guests up until that point. So something bad was bound to happen, I guess. Two so, for two before that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we'll get over it. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe something in the future we'll get to do with him. So keep an eye out on that. But for uh, this week, it's just the two of us. Don't know where anyone else is, honestly. Uh, Tyler's moving. Justin works a lot, I guess. I like, work, I, too. I just yeah, I yeah. just got back from a dinner. I was at Roos Chris. I ate a 22-ounce ribeye, <laughs> uh, probably half a bottle of wine. And then uh, if you ever go to Roos Chris, you got to get the sweet potato casserole. It is the greatest thing ever. So, yeah, I work. We all work, okay? But I show up. Yeah, oh, uh, we'll come out on that. I'll let him. Well, I'll let him know. I'll let him know after. Uh, so fall camp started Monday. It's Wednesday, so right in the front of it now. Not not too deep into it, but for Penn State, there were three uh, position battles we wanted to touch on: uh, right guard, middle linebacker, and the safety that will play next to Jair Brown. Uh, so we're gonna start, I guess, with right guard. I guess this is a two guy race. Landon Tangwell is the left guard. I'm pretty sure they're going with him. Yeah, looks like. Yeah. yeah so it's going to be uh, Salim Wormley, who was supposed to start last year before he got hurt around this time, about a week, a week or two later from this time. Like they were only a week from the start of the season, yeah. and uh, he got hurt. So the, you know you could blame that a little on why they couldn't run the ball. But uh, it's going to be either him or they brought in uh, Cornell transfer Hunter Norzad. It looks like yeah. I, I couldn't think of his last name for a second. Um, but it's gonna be, it, it, I, I think it'll be Norzad. I, I can't see them bringing in the the fifth year transfer and not giving him not him being the kind of the guy they go with first, at least at first. I think like he gets the first crack. I'm not saying he stays there because we saw last year with Eric Wilson, right. you know, that doesn't work anyway. But I, I just want to know which one of the two you kind of see getting the job first. So the good thing about it, I think, is that last year, before he got hurt, Salim Wordley was rumored to be having a tremendous camp, was really looking to be a positive addition to the line. Um, So we're going to assume that now that he's healthy, that's going to carry over. You bring in a kid who's been a starter um, at a a reasonable level for a couple Mm -hmm. of years. Um, So no matter who who they go with, whether it's Sal Warmly, who you really hope so just because I think from a talent standpoint, he's probably uh, more highly touted. He's also got right. another year to go after that. But like, it's not a bad position to be in one way or the other, right? It's not like it's, you know, Salim Warmly coming off an injury or Landon Tangwall, who's a redshirt freshman. It's Salim Warmly coming off an injury or a multi-year starter um, at Cornell and playing a position that, you know, requires – intelligence and things and a Cornell kid is going to bring that. So there are worse positions to be in than that. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, definitely. I think the fact they actually have this problem for what feels like the first time ever is a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think Wormley has a ton of talent that they, because there were a lot of guys in that mix last year too. I think, I don't think a ton of them were, you know, the best of the best, but there were a lot of guys in that battle and he did come out of it 
apparently before he went down yeah. with injury. So, you know, I, I do think, I do think, I, I don't know how I feel or you, I know how I feel. I don't like when they do the rotations. No, where it's like one guy, one series. So, I mean, I, I would like them to stick with it. I know. And they were, they were even doing that against Wisconsin last year. And I'm like, this is like a big game. Like I know it's week one, but it's like, you're on the road conference opponent ranked matchup. Like, and we're rotating offensive linemen every series. So I just, that's one thing I hope they don't do. I hope, you know, unless the guy is awful and they decide, okay, we're going with the other guy. I, I really hope they don't do this whole, like, we'll figure it out on the fly. Cause you're starting at Purdue, which is another tough one. So I just, I don't want to start see the rotation thing again. I agree. And, but I mean, if you look at it across the board, right. So, on um, our lads, they have Fashanu left tackle, Landon Tangwa left guard, Juice Scruggs center, mm-hmm. Salim Wormley right guard, and then Caden Wallace right tackle. So, I don't know. Those are all big names in the recruit, like from a standpoint of talent coming out of high school. Um, some, you know, reasonable amount of experience, at least Caden Wallace. Um, Tangwa got in a little bit last year. Juice Scruggs, again, you know, before his injury from the car accident was also you know, highly touted and was going to be a starter a couple of years back. I don't know, man, this could be the year where the offensive line actually comes together and can do something. Yeah. It's just, it's loaded with talent. And then even behind them, you got, you know, you got Hunter Norzad, you got Bryce Efner, who's done some things. You have Nick Dawkins uh, center, uh, JB Nelson as a transfer. And then Jimmy Christ, who, you know, maybe like, we'll see, but, I don't know, one and a half deep. It looks pretty damn good. Yeah. Yes, especially on the interior. I, I like yep. the interior depth. That the tackle's a little on the shakier side. I wish they would have brought yeah. in. If they were going to bring in a transfer, I would prefer to have been a tackle than a guard. Yep. But it's just kind of the way it falls sometimes. Because I think uh, part of their plan was also they like Caden Wallace more on the inside, and they were hoping to get a tackle to kick him in. So. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. I mean, I, I like the inside. I think they'll run the ball better. I mean, that'll be the biggest thing out of the, come out of that. Caden Wallace listed at 6'5", 324. I mean, that's that's tackle size, right? Almost yeah. there, maybe a smidge shorter than what you like. But, um, man, I don't know. Just hopefully, we, hopefully they run the ball better. And, like, having some depth up, and you saw going back – Five years ago to 2017, Ohio State. I forget who the – I feel like the right tackle went down and then the offense just stalled for the rest of the game. I mean, um, mm-hmm. So Bates, you got to yeah. have some depth. Yeah, Ryan Bates. So you got to have some depth there to continue running the ball. And last year it was a, another kind of subpar performance, but it's going to happen. It's going to click one of these years. Yeah, um, hopefully this is the year. So flipping to the other side of the ball. The good thing – hold on, one before, before okay. you go – so the good thing across the board, like one position out of all the offense where you have a question mark, um, wide receivers, Mike Mitchell Tinsley, KLS and Parker Washington, solid starters with a lot of youngsters as the backups, be it, you know, um, Harrison Wallace, Malik Mega and Caden Saunders. That's okay. Not a lot of experience behind them, but tons of talent behind them. You got Clifford with Velu, who we've seen is can be capable. Um, the tight ends are going to be fantastic. And then the running back position, just tons of depth, right? You don't worry about it from the standpoint of position battles, but like the offensive skill positions has so much depth and so much talent that you don't worry about those. So having only one position of concern or a question on offense going into the season is probably as good as it's been in five or six years, at least. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, for sure. It is a, it is comforting, I think, in a way that, you know, you don't want a guy to go down, but if he does, I think yep. kind of outside of offensive tackle, you feel good about replacing it and not Ooh, really missing yeah. a beat. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of the one position where I, you don't want to see somebody go down. But, I mean, you don't see anybody go down anywhere, but I think Never. that would be the the worst one out of the group to happen for sure. So, yeah, the I think it's starting – the, the fact that they're kind of stacking recruiting classes is helping now. You're starting yep. to see it a little more, I think. Yep. All right, so over to the defense. Uh, you know, the front four, I, I, I don't want to say, like, there's a starting group for that. I feel like there's just so many talented guys that they're just going to rotate them yep. in and out. It really doesn't matter. You know, there's no camp battle there. I feel like it's just, like, how many guys do we have that can play and plug in whenever we need? Because when they were at – when they were going good um, 
you know, for those four years, they were rotating the defensive line a lot too. Like there was a yep. lot of guys getting in. So if they could get back to that, I think that'll help a lot. Um, so Will linebacker, it's going to be Curtis Jacobs, who everyone loves. He's a but, budding superstar. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be fantastic. Yeah, that, that's going to be a good one. Sam Sutherland, it, it is what it is. I mean, he can – he has experience as safety and coverage, which the sandbacker, you know, he's kind of like the coverage back. So it, it's not the worst case. I wish they had a little more depth there, but I, I think he'll be solid. I'm like, you're not going to see anything great, but. So I don't know if you watched the for the bloggy video the other day um, on kind of some of Manny Diaz and Manny Diaz is scheming and things like I that. I did. Yeah. So maybe it evolves to a little bit of that robber position where he's athletic mm-hmm. enough, hopefully to, you know, do some things, not covering slot receivers, not covering edge receivers, um, not having to be such a run stopper, but you know, a little more freelance and he is a good athlete. So, you know, let's, Let's hope that Manny Diaz can scheme to make the best of what we have at that position. Yeah. 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 So, so the battle is the middle linebacker spot. Ellis Brooks is gone. He played the majority. So good of the, last year. Uh, yeah. The majority of the snaps are last year. And then when he didn't in the bowl game, Jesse Locata moved from end back yeah. to middle linebacker. So the, the experience level is very low. You got a redshirt sophomore, Tyler Elston, a redshirt freshman, and Kobe King. You know, e- either way, like no. Even though Elson's a year older, he really doesn't have any advantage in terms of experience here. I'd say I think it's kind of pretty equal. Yeah, I don't know what we have. What have we seen out of either of them to be able to say what's going to happen one way or the other? Right? Like that's just yeah, that yeah. there's a little bit more experience from just one more year in the system from Tyler Elson, but that's about it. I mean, this is going to be a very crucial position going into the season where there is a pretty big question mark, right? And, and can the other 10 guys cover up for a potential, I don't know, you know, lack of that experience that really command is commanded by being in the middle of the field and being the main linebacker on the field. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see. I know like they love Kobe King when, yeah. when he uh, signed back in the class of 2021 at their signing day press conference, Terry Smith called him like a future captain. I know he, he hosted a lot of the recruits they had on campus back in June and like all those guys seem to talk highly about him. So, I mean, people like him. He seems to have kind of those leadership qualities. I don't know if, you know, that's enough to just win you a job straight out, but when you're the middle linebacker, the middle defense, you kind of do need some of those qualities. You know, the good thing, though, the defensive tackles are going to be awesome. I mean, you got P.J. back, and we saw that, that he passed his physical and conditioning. Um, the multi-deep there on the defensive interior between P.J. Mustafer, Kazai Izzard, Devon Ellis, Hakeem Beeman, um, Jordan Vandenberg is going to be great. So that at least, you know, if if the if the middle linebacker is a little bit weaker and takes a little bit longer to get going, um, he's not like – it's not like the rest of the interior defense is going to be suffering. So that'll be a strength outside of the middle back. And he'll, he'll get, he'll get some time to, to get acclimated. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, there is so much talent around whoever wins the job that yeah. it, it might cover it up at first. And that, you know, that's a spot where I think you can get away with maybe a rotation. I think an offensive line has to gel more as a group. Yep. I think you can get away with doing a rotation a little more at a linebacker spot and trying to figure it out from there if you want to for a game or two. That that I'm like I could you know live with a little more. I think it's not as risky. I agree. I, I would well at least I think I agree. I don't know enough <laughs> about yeah, you no. know. I, I, yeah, I'm yeah. not a, I'm not a good enough football coach to know if that is a position <laughs> where you want to have a weakness, right? I don't think so, but. Um, if the 10 guys around you are fantastic and they're going to be, you know, the both other linebackers are going to be great. The secondary is going to be great. And the defensive line is going to be fantastic. You know, you have one weak spot there that you have a lot of talent at again, like on offensive line and just take some time to get acclimated to game speed and get some experience before you, you know, take that next step. So it'll be, I think it'll be okay. And like, I don't know, man, you know, you look at the offense, you look at this and we're going to talk about safety in a minute too, but, there, there is some pessimism going around 
Penn State Twitter about, you know, what the ceiling is and stuff, but it just looks good to me. I don't know. The offense looks good. The vast majority of the defense looks good. We'll talk about predictions later and stuff, but I don't know. It just all looks, like, very positive. Yeah, it is. It's It just feels deeper, I think. Like, outside of the linebackers, yeah. like we talked about, it, it feels – you have comfort if a guy goes down at a couple spots more than yep. in years past. So at safety, we know Jair Brown has a spot that's in stone, covered over in glass. Like that, that's not going anywhere. So it's kind of a three man race then for the other spots. So it's going to be Keaton Ellis and then two younger guys, and Zaki Wheatley and uh, Jalen Reed, who are both redshirt freshmen. Yeah, redshirt freshmen. So I, I I would lean towards Ellis at this point. I, I just think the older guy's going to get it there. I, those two guys it's probably starting. Yeah. yeah, those two guys starting next year, Reed and Wheatley, I think is going to be perfect. I think they can both step into that role, but I think Ellis is going to get the job this year. Uh, you know, physical guy, former cornerback, so some good ball skills. Yeah. I, I think that's where they're going to go with that one. I would tend to agree. I mean, he's, he's a senior now. I did – Jalen Reed is one year old, and they're both redshirt freshmen. But is he a year older than Zaki Wheatley? I feel like Jalen Reed played a lot last year and potentially. I'm sorry, he, he's he, is his his redshirt might be burned. Actually, he might be. Well, on here it says he's a redshirt freshman, but is that because he got a he got the COVID? Oh no no no! They um, were they were both in the the 21 class. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because he played he played a ton last year. I think for that it um, did feel that so, way. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that's an, just another position where, okay, the the second level guys maybe aren't as experienced as Jair Brown and Keaton Ellis, but still highly, highly talented. And both of them played a lot last year. So, you know, if you want to rotate safeties, especially early in the year against Ohio, against CMU, um, maybe less so against Purdue, who's going to throw it a lot, like less so yeah. against Auburn, who's going to run the ball like crazy. Um, but you get a couple of games early on where you can get some experience for the two deep at safety as well. And then the cornerbacks, again, cornerbacks are going to be just kind of crazy good between Joey Porter, as long as he doesn't have too many penalties, and uh, <laughs> Kalen, Kalen King, Daquan Hardy, Johnny Dixon, and Marquise Wilson. you, you got five guys there that are going to be very strong. So, yeah, that, that, that group, that group, no worries. So good. There. Yeah, so good. they'll be good. Yeah. That'll be good. I think that'll kind of help cover up if you have some problems at, with the safety position at yeah. first, too. That one spot. I mean, obviously, Brown will also make up for any He's going to be an All-American, right? Like, he's probably, I don't know, maybe better than Brisker was last year. Potentially has the potential to be, at least from a, from the standpoint of coverage and getting turnovers, maybe not as quite as good a run stopper as Brisker was. Brisker yeah. seems bigger and, like, a little tougher uh, coming downhill. Um, but Jair Brown's going to get tons of interceptions and will be an All American. Yeah, they uh, they went yeah. two for two on Lackawanna uh, Community College oh, safeties. Yeah. yeah, two uh, for two there. They got both of them worked out pretty well. Damn near every kid that's come from Lackawanna has been very good. I mean, from Paris Palmer, I think was the original one that I remember. Mm -hmm. um, James Franklin got and he played a lot of games, right? Like I don't think I think wanted a little more out of him, but he played a lot. Um, the defensive backs have been tremendous. Yeah, they have been. So the one the one uh, battle, is I don't know if it's even called a battle, but the one position they really have to kind of fill in for during camp is just Jordan Stout in general. I mean, this guy, he plays kicked, you know, he, he did the punting, he, played all three roles and it looks like it might be three different guys filling those roles. I mean, that's, you're counting on three guys now that are brand new when you had, you know, one solid veteran doing all three of those a year ago. Are you there? Check. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think it was you. I don't think it was me. Man, it might've been me. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Sorry. All right. Anyway, we're still going. Sorry. You can cut that off. I so will. yes, replacing Jordan stuff. Continue your thought. No, I was just – I was going to go to you then where you kind of have three guys that – it's three young guys that you need to fill in for someone who did all three of those things very well. No frigging clue, right? Like, no idea. Jake Pinnaker, yeah. at least, did um, probably the most vital 
you know, punter is a very vital position too. But from place kicking, Pinnaker's got a lot of experience. I, I, you know, he had a little bit of an up and down season a couple of years ago. Um, but at least he's experienced there. Punter. I don't know. We're at, what do you think? Uh, yeah. uh, Jordan Stout it was the best punter in the country uh, or one of the top two best punters in the country last year beside, behind the kid from San Diego State. Um, that's a big weapon to lose, right? And then kickoffs, same thing. Like, you're damn near guaranteed a touchback every time you want it. That's a big weapon to lose. So, And, it, and it's a very volatile position, I think, too, right? It's not something yeah. where – just because somebody's kicking it like that in practice, they're going to immediately translate into a game. I think this, if anything, is kind of scary, frightening. It's the it's the kicking game. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, and you know, we talked about how good the defense was last year. Stout played a role in that, always flipping field position, yep. putting other offenses, you know, deep in their own territory. You know, you can't discount what that does either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. It's it could be a lot of things that the you know a lot of games that hinge on the team's ability to not punt it into the end zone, not shank punts, and then make timely extra points and field goals. Right. So yeah. So that that's kind of the Penn State battles to keep an eye on. You know, see what happens there. Who wins what? We'll see how it goes uh, as the weeks go on. There's one interesting one I do want to talk about that has to do with the team Penn State plays, and that's the Michigan quarterback battle because J.J. McCarthy, former five-star, kind of sat behind Cade McNair last year. Ready to start? Not. I I think maybe most Michigan fans want the five-star. They kind of look at Cade as I, I think he gets looked at kind of like how Sean Clifford gets looked at around here. You know, I, I I want I'm interested to see kind of where that battle goes as August goes on. Yeah, I, you can look at them as cross-eyed as you want, but at the end of the day, they won the Big Ten last year. Yeah, I don't think he had a ton of turnovers. Like, I'd have to go. I want to go look. Um, but he managed them to wins, right? And and timely plays. If you think about the Penn State game last year when. Um, you know, Penn State took the lead with four, four or five ish minutes to go, and then you know they have a twenty yard dump off to the tight end that turns into a seventy yard touchdown or whatever it was, right? So yeah. uh, let's see. Last year, Cade McNamara was sixty four percent complete, sixty four completion percentage, uh, seven point nine yards per attempt, fifteen TDs, and six interceptions. So you know, the not a ton of TDs, probably more interceptions than I thought, but. You're completing 64% of your balls. That's not awful, right? Then that's a pretty decent percentage. They're not going for tons of yards, but at the same time, like you just want somebody to manage the game. And they had last year an absolutely stellar defense and a decent run game. So um, I don't, I don't know, but yeah, you look at it. It's, it's the next one we're going to talk about with Clemson and kind of the same thing with, with Penn State, you bring a five-star in who's looking to start straight away. Um, and how many years and how many games can he sit back behind, you know, maybe a quote-unquote less talented starter uh, before fans and, and teammates start getting a little restless? Yeah, yeah I, I do think, you know, he benefited from the fact that their offense line was great, their running attack yeah. was great. I think maybe the argument there is then they went into the playoff, played Georgia, and got destroyed. And it's kind of like if we want to get yeah. – to where that's competitive, do you have to go to JJ McCarthy then, who maybe has the higher ceiling and yep. can make that game a little closer or even winnable? I, you know, that's something I think we might be talking about around here this time next year with Fayou or Aller. So, I, you know, something to keep an eye on, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I said uh, McNamara was 15 to six TDs to interceptions. Um, last year, JJ McCarthy, five to two. So exactly the same ratio. Yeah. Uh, McNamara, 7.9 <laughs> yards per attempt. Uh, McCarthy, 8.7. So, you know, on a, on a smaller sample size, they did basically the same thing. I think um, McCarthy provided, provides a little bit better kind of run option. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's the stupidest saying, old saying in the world, like the most popular 
player on the team is the backup quarterback. And when you have a five-star, super talented backup quarterback, that's always going to be the case, right? So, yeah. Um, right. And we have one this year who's going to be starting out as probably third string, right? And uh, we'll see. And people are going to be chomping at the bit to get him in before even Christian Velu. So, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I think the other thing is people need to understand that if Clifford struggles or gets hurt, it's probably not going to be Allard that yeah. jumps in there a lot of people are going to be disappointed to find that out i feel like yeah. but um for the the clemson one dju i'm keeping it there i'm not trying to pronounce his last name you know who i'm talking about and, DJU, uh, yes. That's yeah you, you try it yeah. Yeah. I, i'm not trying that uh and then clip klubnik the uh the true freshman coming in five star from last year that's an interesting one because i feel like clemson fans will tell you they did get what they thought maybe they were getting from him now they they had like no run game their receivers were banged up and stuff mm-hmm. that was not you know a typical clemson team that we've seen in the past no. 10 years or almost 10 years now i'd say so I, I am curious to see that one i don't have as good of a scouting report on that one as the michigan battle obviously we don't see them don't really and the fact that they weren't pretty much in the playoff hunt i didn't really bother to watch them that much really throughout the year so um you know that that that'll be an interesting one. The thing with DJ is he's he's a bigger guy, stand in the pocket. Yeah. You know he's he's he is intimidating in the pocket. But uh, I think if you want to move a little more, get out, run. Klubnik might be the better option. So that that is one. I'm curious to see what Dabo does there. So all right. So just to compare DJ to the Michigan quarterbacks, just because I have it open. Um, last year, DJ threw for uh, 55.6% completion or per- completion percentage, six yards per attempt. So a full yeah. two yards lower than either of the Michigan quarterbacks, nine TDs and 10 interceptions. Um, not very good. Not And like you said, last year's Clemson team, not what they've been in the years past. Um, but also you don't have Trevor Lawrence. You don't have um, – even Kelly Bryant back there with the way he performed last year. Um, on his heels, Cade Klubnik, um, Westlake High School, 6A Texas champs, t- state champs last year. Uh, 250 yards a game. What is this? Let's see, 190 out of 260. So nearly 80%, 80 completion percentages and uh, 43 TDs against three interceptions. So, you know, the number two quarterback in the country – Clemson will want a Kelly Bryant slash Trevor Lawrence situation 2.0, where probably, you know, DJ starts the season, doesn't go quite great, second or third game, and they bring in Cade Klubnik and he starts the next three years, right? Like, that's probably yeah. what they're expecting. Um, I don't know. There was a time two years ago when people thought DJ was going to go into the portal and like all the Penn state fans wanted him more than anything in the world. Right. This, but so you just don't know with quarterbacks and, you know, he had a whole season last year. Didn't quite work out. The five star on his heels is going to be again, the most popular person, just like Drew Aller, just like JJ McCarthy. Um, you just don't know until they step onto a field against like FBS and power five competition to know how they're going to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's there's a difference there between high school and uh, you know Alabama. You know, yeah. It's not not nearly the same thing. Um, so that that's kind of where we're at for football talk today. We don't have Tyler or Justin to uh, say something you know out of the ordinary. Um, I did want to ask. I I really wanted to ask them what they would have done if they won the mega millions, the 1.2 billion one, Justin probably would have said something about a stupid parlay. Tyler would have been like buy an entire drink, a bar or something. I I, I could already tell what those two are going to say. Did you see how much that guy paid that person paid in taxes? Yeah, it was, it was so the, what did he take home? Do you know, do you remember? It was like four, 436 million. Yeah, out exactly. Of one point. So, yeah. yeah. Like seventy percent of the money goes to taxes. Like he becomes instantly the most prolific taxpayer in like the United States, which is insane. Yeah. Um, well, I think if you take the lump sum, I think it went from like one point two to like maybe eight and a half million. Okay. Right. Somewhere in there. So like, yeah, and then you pay. Okay, about so like that's fifty percent of that. Okay. Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, but anyway, yeah. problems of 
so what would you do with $433 million? Uh, I saw this tweeted and I would have done the same exact thing. And it was buy a couple five stars. <laughs> I, I, that, that's <laughs> for right, like that's your own personal football team. Be, be well, no, like, oh, okay. no, like get, get some NIL uh, <laughs> fund going, you know, start that, that, that would probably be number one. <laughs> um, after that, I mean, I don't know. Buy. I don't, I like to have like a different apartments in like different areas. That <laughs> if I want to go somewhere for a weekend, like one in say college, like one in Philly, like that. That would kind of be something I would do. I wouldn't like go crazy. I buy a lot of like real estate. I think four hundred and thirty-three million dollars is an ungodly amount of money. Okay, yeah. like it's more money than you think. So, um, you could spend ten thousand dollars every day for forty thousand days okay yeah so just drop 10 grand or whatever you want for forty thousand days straight Forty thousand days is a hundred years right or more than a hundred yeah. years yeah, it's so um no it's it's an unfathomable amount of money um you first put away a big chunk of that i don't know 350 million dollars and you make your family wealthy uh, in perpetuity, basically for the rest of existence of the United States of America. And then you take 80 million bucks and yeah, maybe you get an apartment in Philly, you fancy guy, you, and then state college. And, uh, I don't know, maybe at the beach, like, yeah, I, I would, I would immediately stop working. Right. I would, <laughs> yeah. I would go tell, I would take a, a, a briefcase full of like $5 million up to James Franklin and be like, Hey man, I am part of your staff now have this money. I would like to hang out. Um, and like you said, like, yeah, probably buy a, you know, NIL deal, a team together of the best player, the best defensive players from Georgia, maybe Tyke Smith to compliment, you know, Jair Brown, you get yeah. some Alabama um, linemen, maybe CJ Stroud wants to come over, Kyle McCord even, you get the backup, right? Like you could just build the super team and guarantee – Penn State wins the national championship this year and then move to like, I don't know, the South Pacific and live in a mansion for the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, that, so, that sounds like a good plan. I, I'd go yeah. with that. I, I would go with that. That would be fun. Um, but alas, yeah. I don't think you won. I didn't. No. Win, so, no, I didn't, no, I didn't win, unfortunately. Oh, that uh, like, yeah. A little devastating, but. I would get better podcast uh, microphone and earphones. Too. Yeah, the, you know, I'd also yeah, I would put money into that. I'd buy like an actual stu- <laughs> I'd buy like an actual studio or something. I think uh, and an actual editor instead of myself. But that 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 would be the biggest help, honestly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that would be. Um, so I want to keep this one a little brief because next week we're gonna do like a national preview, look at some other teams, you know, college playoff picks who could win other conferences and then the week after that we're going to really dive into penn state we're getting close yeah, yeah season preview so those gonna be longer ones um should have some of the other guys in the cu- coming weeks too because i know justin wants to put in all his preseason bets to talk about he's he's excited for it he keeps he messaged me every once in a while and tells me i'm like all right all right I'll, well like he's gotta show, show up man. Yeah, i was like show up then <laughs> yeah show up if you want it on there Oh man! All right, so yeah, we'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back next week. Gonna try to find a nat- like someone with some national coverage uh, to bring on, talk about. So kind of chips away at our biases, maybe. That'll... Lee Corso, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, like Kirk Herb Street, someone. Like Herb that, Street you know? would be good. Yeah, yeah probably. Uh, yeah, you know. I'll reach out. Yeah. yeah, we will. All right. I'm Alec. All right. He's Nate. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks, man.